up Japan City volunteers hold a distribution at the Yoyogi Park, serving 120 homeless people. Taiwan City volunteers hold morning study session by watching wisdom at dawn at the Tsuji Jilong Retreat. Welcome to Dar Headlines. I'm Helen Nell. Thank you for joining us to help the homeless in Tokyo. Despite the recent snowstorm, Japan City volunteers insisted on holding their twice monthly hot meal distribution, helping a total of 120 people. Despite the sun being out, the temperature in Tokyo is less than 10 degrees. In the midst of this cold snap, city volunteers, as they have been doing since 2009, are holding a meal distribution for the homeless at Yoyogi Park. Since 2009, Japan City volunteers in Tokyo have been providing hot meals for the homeless twice a month, come rain or shine. It is our goal to help the less fortunate with a grateful heart. We want to give them the chance to enjoy a hot meal. After nearly five years, city volunteers have become quite familiar with the homeless here. While the homeless wait in line for their hot meal, volunteers introduce things to the aphorisms and everyone prays together for peace and prosperity. Respectfully offering each recipient with a bowl of curry rice, the volunteers' gestures have deeply touched the hearts of everyone in attendance. When I came out of my house to shovel away the snow, it was very cold, and I thought about those without roofs over their heads. Most of them are sleeping in the park even in this cold weather. I feel very bad for them, so I want to help. As the homeless get ready to leave, volunteers give them some rice balls to take away, ensuring this is one night that they won't go to bed on empty stomachs. Indonesia's Mount Kelu erupted on February 13, affecting some 200,000 people. As many residents are experiencing respiratory problems, city volunteers handed off surgical masks, helping to ensure everyone remains healthy and safe. Looking ahead, houses, buildings and cars are all blanketed in a layer of volcanic ash following the eruption of Mount Kalud. Heavy ash was seen up to 200 kilometers away, including in central Java, where motorists switched on headlights in daylight. Crops have been damaged and business along sidewalks has come to a standstill. The eruption has affected our livelihoods and our everyday lives. Usually a hot spot for tourists, the area is now deserted. More than 100,000 people have been evacuated to temporary shelters, with many of them starting to show signs of discomfort. Most of the local residents are having difficulty breathing and are experiencing eye problems. Some children are also suffering from respiratory infections, but the army is already tending to these symptoms at their camp. The city foundation has joined hands with the local army to distribute 20,000 surgical masks, blankets, soap, food and other daily necessities at temporary shelters in East Java. Thank goodness we are all okay. We have medicine and food, but my heart goes out to those with children or those who are now out of jobs. It's a very difficult time for all of us. The material assistance holds the care of city volunteers as they hope to relieve the plight now faced by the disaster survivors. In Taiwan, members of the Tsuji Teachers Association arrived at the Hopu Elementary School in New Taipei City with an empty drug message that was delivered to over 600 students and teachers, while their counterparts in Taipei traveled to Zhongshan Junior High School in Songshan to spread an anti bullying message. <laughs> Teenagers when growing up are terrified of being different from others and are worried of being bullied. 
If I help him in front of everyone else, then they will think we are on the same side, and I will get teased as well, so I will comfort him in private. We should stand in other people's shoes before we act. This way, society will be more at peace and in harmony. City volunteer Li Meijing and other members of City Teachers Association arrive at Dongsan Junior High School in Taipei to put on a short skit. We want to give them the right perspectives and ways to deal with these challenges. For the past four years, Tsuji has designed performances whose messages are easy to understand. They are live performances as well as video clips, all of which have had a positive influence on our students. The message behind these skits and videos influences the students' behavior and the overall environment of the school for the better. In Hopu Elementary School of New Taipei City, Tsuji volunteers pass on their anti-drug message through video clips detailing real-life stories. We should try to teach students not to associate with drugs. To do whatever should be done is wisdom. To do whatever should not be done is ignorance. Using drugs are acts of ignorance. Besides helping students learn how detrimental drugs are to our body, city volunteers also make sure sixth graders who are about to enter junior high school know how to say no to drugs. In the near future, these students might come across drugs. Through discussing such ideas, we hope to stop them from doing the wrong things. Saying no to drugs will help these students walk on the right path in life. Recently, Tsuji's Yonghe liaison office held a recruitment gatherings. During the event, Tsuji volunteer Wang Yuezhi was invited to share her volunteer experience with the audience. Besides working each day, I also need to educate children. After teaching other people's children, I then need to take care of my own children too. Wang Yuezhi is a vivacious speaker and a well-known tutor in her industry. A graduate from Danjiang University's accounting department, Wang has 21 years of tutoring experience. However, her million-dollar annual salary has yet to bring her happiness from within. The main thing is that I have a reputation to uphold. I manage other children well, yet my own family is a mess because I don't have much time. Her spiritual gratification was only obtained upon doing volunteer work. Wang gave up half of her working hours to devote her time to promote doing good deeds. In the past decade, she has earned less money, but received much dharma joy in return instead. Wang Yuezhi's sharing at the Tsuji Yonghe Liaison Office has inspired a retired elementary school teacher to help tutor impoverished students. This is my specialty. Doing this can help benefit others and I also gain happiness in return. The 270 city volunteers on site hope to recruit more like-minded individuals from all walks of life to join their ranks and join them on the city path. Next to me, 24-year-old Chen Bo Yu, who suffers from a rare type of congenital brittle bone disease. During his rehab at the hospital, he met Shan Shan, a cerebral palsy patient. Seeing the less fortunate, Chen decided to do something on her behalf and recently donated his first salary to Shan Shan and her family. Everyone joins in song to give blessings to cerebral palsy patient San San. Among them is Chen Bo Yu, who suffers a rare type of congenital brittle bone disease. Today he is here to give his first salary to her. I try to save up as much as I can, so the money can be used to help those in greater need. Although Chen Bo Yu suffers from the brittle bone disease, which hampers his height, he is not discouraged. With the encouragement of his mother, Chen studied hard in college and gave her scholarship to help Shan Shan and her family. I hope you can understand that the reason he can grow safe and sound is all because of the kind assistance we've received. So I want to encourage him to use his life story to inspire more people like him. To look after her daughter, Shan Shan's mother quit her job and cannot make ends meet thanks to Chen Bo Yu's charitable deeds. Other charity organizations also followed in his footstep, providing San San's family with financial and material aid. We are glad to see the disadvantage 
people helping the less fortunate. In fact, disabled children also have the ability to help those in greater need, and we hope to pass on that idea to more people. Overcoming the disability, Chen Boyu is not only able to live a life of independence, but also able to extend his love to those in need. Holidays are the time for presents. However, after the holidays, recycling stations are filled with gift boxes, which are enjoyed for a brief time being being thrown away. Perhaps we should return our focus to the gift itself and learn to reuse gift packaging. <laughs> Taking a bite here, a bite there, during the Chinese New Year holidays, houses are often filled with delicious treats from family and friends. But what to do with the packaging after the contents are eaten? I won't want to throw it out because it's so pretty, but I end up tossing them the next year as they get dusty and take up a lot of space. Most of them get cleared away since there isn't much use for them. Many people share the same sentiment, wanting to save the boxes for later, but in the end, throwing them away. However, manufacturing these gift boxes actually is not cheap. Visiting a gift box manufacturer, the assembly line is running non-stop. In order to meet deadlines for the Chinese New Year, workers work overtime, often shipping out 50,000 boxes or more a day. This is a semi-automatic press machine. It will curl and seal the sides and bottom. While some gift boxes are mass-produced, others are custom-made. This is a more complex packaging. First, the materials need to be formed by a handmade cutting mold and then assembled piece by piece. On top of which, each step of assembling needs to be precise, so it's more costly. Some gift boxes can cost around six U.S. dollars to manufacture. In looking at the display shelf of this company's products, it seems all types of gift boxes are made to meet customers' needs. But regardless of how much effort is put into making a package, the lifespan of a gift box is short. Arriving at a recycling station after the Chinese New Year, one sees the recycling area filled with all sorts of discarded packaging, like this fruit gift box or this cookie box. They all look to be in good condition. The amount of paper recyclables collected during the Lunar New Year is three times the normal amount. After the Lunar New Year, paper recyclables take up almost half the recycling station. Three days before New Year's Eve, we sent out around 20 trucks for paper, and each of those trucks can carry four tons of paper. Not only paper packaging, but there is a lot of plastic dividers and plastic bags, which are not recyclable. What took dollars to manufacture earns mere pennies when recycled. We hope that consumers will think twice when gifting and place an importance on the gift itself. As well, they should try to reuse packaging whenever possible and reduce the amount of trash produced. The Ciji Jilong retreat in Taiwan has since the end of January been holding morning gatherings so that participants can find inspiration in Master Jinyan's wisdom at dawn broadcast. And those who have braved the rain and code over the past month say they have found themselves changed for the better. Before 3 a.m. Ciji volunteer Xing Yuan Xiong, a taxi driver, is ready to get on the road not for work but to drive his fellow volunteers to the nearby retreat to watch wisdom at dawn. If we get up earlier, we will have two to three hours more to look at good views. Getting up early is never easy in Jilong, where it rains over 200 days a year. Despite the recent cold front, Tan Xianxiang and his wife arrive on their bike before 4 a.m. We have to wear a raincoat with our helmets. It's not inconvenient to come here at all. Since the end of January, members of the Ciji Jilong Retreat can now watch the Master's teaching through video conferencing. Ciji volunteer Liu Jiyu, who returned to Taiwan from Malaysia, also joins the morning study session. 
If getting up to watch wisdom at dawn can be treated as part of our daily lives, just like the three meals we eat and the showers we take every day, then there shouldn't be any difficulty. Turning their sleeping hours into a time to absorb wisdom, volunteers all relish in Dharma joy. Besides gaining wisdom, we also get to follow in the Master's footsteps. When the time comes, I will wake up. I don't need an alarm clock anymore. Over the past 20 days, the number of participants has only increased. I feel that we gain the dharma needed to pass each day. Some volunteers, even though suffering from colds, still came. It is really just about determination. In Singapore, staff members of the Tzu Singapore chapter recently organized a New Year's gatherings to thank Tzu volunteers for their hard work over the past year. Here's more. Here at the Tzu Singapore chapter, over 50 staff members are busy preparing meals and decorating the venue for their upcoming New Year's gathering. Their guests this time are fellow Tzu volunteers from around the country. We hope that they can feel like they are coming home as they take part in this gathering. We want them to know their family is here waiting for them. The volunteers make many significant contributions over the past year, so we want to take this chance to show our gratitude. As the event begins, the volunteers relish in the delicious vegetarian meals and enjoy the shows. To be honest, there are not so much staff here at the Singapore chapter, so it must not be easy for them to serve so many volunteers. This gathering allows us to come together and chat with one another just like a family reunion. These are all my family members. I am immersed in their love and warmth. In the show skit, the staff displays their daily interactions with the volunteers. Without the support of the staff, our work could not be carried out smoothly. Thanks to the partnership between the staff and volunteers, Suji's missions can prosper and thrive here in Singapore. Through the New Year's gathering, volunteers and staff members have forged a closer bond and will continue to work as one to fulfill Suji's missions in the years ahead. In the United States, the Tzu Academy in Irvine, California recently held a carnival to celebrate the arrival of spring. During the event, students and parents had the chance to enjoy Taiwanese snacks and various fun food activities. A traditional line dance performance surprises the students at the Tzu Academy in Irvine, California. The line dance troupe is made up by a group of Tzu volunteers and parents to let them experience the flavor of the New Year. Volunteers also encourage youngsters to say good words. Meanwhile, outdoors, Tzu volunteers are holding a carnival that is filled with interactive games and delicious Taiwanese snacks. Despite being far away from Taiwan, thanks to the volunteers, participants were still able to get a taste of home. It is very rare to have the opportunity to celebrate the Lunar New Year in California like we used to in Taiwan. That's why we insist on attending the event every year. The event gives our children the chance to learn more about Taiwanese culture. This event is very successful. Everyone is very happy. I hope this kind of event can be held on a yearly basis so our children can have the chance to learn more about Chinese culture and build up good relationship with one another. And they're very excited to have her, their grandchildren here to um, celebrate their Taiwanese culture and to teach her about the Lunar New Year and um, to spend time with the family. As everyone attending the carnival has to use reusable utensils, many participants not only have the chance to enjoy the festivities of the Lunar New Year, but also safeguard our Mother Earth. 
in Taiwan, teachers of the parent-child classes in Banqiao and Yonghe districts design interactive games to teach children the importance of having compassion and empathy towards others. But first, let's go to Taipei's Ciji Guanzhou Ground, where Ci Xiao held a charity sale to raise funds for those devastated by Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. A drum performance by a group of Tsushars marks the opening of a charity fair at the Tsuji Guandu Grants in Taipei, Taiwan. <laughs> Other than performances by Tsushars, many parents contributed their share by making delicious vegetarian food. This is Huang Yue Zhu, who prepared puddings and tiramisu. Huang says it was thanks to a local breakfast shop owner that she was able to prepare the sweets. I told the shop owner that I would pay him for the power and water. He said not to worry because I was doing a good deed and he wanted to contribute. Other than delicious cakes, volunteers also prepared deep fried sticky rice balls in different flavors. Upon learning that the sales were holding their charity sale, one shop owner decided to donate five kilograms of glutinous rice balls to show his support. When the shop owner heard that the two shops were holding a charity fair, he decided to donate five kilograms of sticky rice balls. As the weather has been very cold, the Odem booth is constantly filled with people. Other than showing their support by purchasing delicious vegetarian food, many also donated their second-hand clothing and unused items. When you donate unused items or purchase something, you can help the less fortunate. Today, Tsuzhou's got the chance to help disaster survivors in the Philippines. The proceeds collected from the fair will be put towards Tsuzhou's international relief missions. Thanks to Charity Fair, Tsuzhou's from the Guandu district not only discovered the joy of giving, but also the importance of cherishing their blessings. Meanwhile, at the Ciji Banqiao Grants in New Taipei City, children are learning the importance of compassion and empathy. You guys did great. Do you still want to hurt others? They understood that it is not right to do so and also realized that if they didn't hurt others, their hearts would be untouched as well. Through a silent song and interactive games, Participants of the Yonghe parent-child class realized the importance of having a loving heart and discovered the difficulties that people with disabilities have when performing simple everyday tasks. And in Taipei Songshan District, participants of the parent-child class there donated their filled bamboo coin banks so that those affected by Typhoon Haiyan have the chance to rebuild their lives. We go to Malaysia at the end of the show to introduce Tsuji to more people. Penang Tsuji volunteers held a spring festival at the Greenland community. Prior to the event, volunteers thoughtfully went door to door to invite local residents to attend. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.